Free Eye Atlas deserves special attention because of these anomalies. This interstellar object has a retrograde trajectory. This means it's aligned with the ecliptic plane of the planets around the Sun to within 5 degrees, with a chance probability of 1 in 500. This coincidence brings Free Eye Atlas to pass within several tens of millions of kilometres from Mars, Venus and Jupiter. And this doesn't appear to be a natural path, instead, this appears deliberate by design. Also, the diameter of the nucleus of Free Eye Atlas has an upper limit of 45 kilometres, which would make it a million times more massive than the interstellar comet 2i Borisov. On October the 3rd, the HI RISE camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter will be able to image Free Eye Atlas with a pixel resolution of 30 kilometres. This will provide the best limit on the diameter of its nucleus. And for a couple of months, for a couple of months after its discovery, when Free Eye Atlas was at its heliocentric distance of 3 or 4.5 times the Earth-Sun separation, and during this time, it featured a glow which extended towards the Sun and not in the opposite direction. This feature of an antitail was never observed before for comets, and this forced some astronomers to be concerned that this was akin to an interstellar braking manoeuvre. And it also features cyanide rising sharply with decreasing heliocentric distances. This interstellar interloper is characterised by an extremely deep and narrow negative polarisation, with a low invasive angle of 6.4 degrees. This polar metric behaviour is significantly different from all known comets, either interstellar or bound to this solar system. And this is the first object ever known with its combination of low inversion angle and extreme negative polarisation. And this anomalous polarisation may be the result of the very elongated configuration of scattered sunlight around it with a 10 to 1 aspect ratio. In the existing scientific literature on Free Eye Atlas, each one of these anomalies is shoved under the carpet of traditional thinking in the context of dusty water in a rich comet. And this isn't surprising, as it follows the mindset of Ecclesiastes 1 through 9, where it says, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. However, the combination of these five anomalies in Free Eye Atlas, this argues for something far more interesting to develop. In a new analysis published by Avi Loeb of the Hubble Space Telescope image of the interstellar object Free Eye Atlas, the researchers note that the glow of scattered sunlight appears twice as long from the object towards the sun than it is in the directions perpendicular or opposite to the sun, where the extent of the glow appears to be the same. This sunward extension of the glow around Free Eye Atlas is opposite in direction to the tail of scattered sunlight that is commonly observed for comets. The physics behind these cometary tails is simple. Sunlight wavelengths scatter the light and hence are pushed by solar radiation pressure away from the sun. As a result, comet displays tails of reflected sunlight that point away from the sun so why does Free Eye Atlas exhibit an anti-tail in the opposite direction, pointing towards the Sun? And an even more remarkable fact about the anti-tail of Free Eye Atlas is that it is noticeable as a factor of two in very unfavourable projections. The line of sight connecting Free Eye Atlas to planet Earth was misaligned with the line connecting Free Eye Atlas to the Sun by only 10 degrees on July the 25th of this year. This is when the Hubble image was taken. And this means that we are seeing the extension of the glow nearly edge on, smaller by a geometric factor of the sine of 10 degrees. The geometric correction factor for this projection is 1 sin of 10 degrees, this equals 5.76. This implies that if we were to board a spacecraft and hover vertically to the sunward direction above the elongated glow of scattered sunlight around Free Eye Atlas, 
we would see it extending 10 times further towards the sun than its width or tail. And this is a remarkable elongation that was not discussed in the scientific literature prior to Avi Loeb's observations. And just remember guys, on October the 3rd, the HI RISE camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter will be able to image Free Eye Atlas with a pixel resolution of 30 kilometers, and this will provide the best limit on the diameter of its nucleus. So as Mars orbiting spacecraft and large observatories on Earth keep watching into October and November of this year, we will learn more whether those odd light scattering properties and gas ratios stay extreme or converge toward normal comet behaviour. But for now, the data does not support calling it this thing a comet. But what do you guys think about this? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.